Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose or you can find a way to take it to the stupid. And you hold your horses. And let's not take it to the stupid when it comes to Tim Bradley. Is he good for the company? Or is he good for the boxers? Or is there just any good in him? That's the question. Tim Bradley, Mr. Potato Head, ESPN analyst, re-signed to another contract. I want to know, what's the problem with you people? And Tim Bradley, what is he doing that's getting y'all so upset? Jesus Christ. When he was fighting, y'all loved him, right? When he was this guy, Mr. 33 wins, 13 knockouts. Only two losses, zero by KO, 39% KO ratio, polymelanagie-ish, 5'6", 69-inch reach. Let me tell you something. How are y'all falling out of love with Tim Bradley, who was in there putting the bing bings on people? Right? He beat Brandon Riso, Rios, knocked him out. Be beat Jesse Fargus. He beat Pacquiao. Right? He did do it, didn't he? He went in there, shocked me when he beat Juan Manuel Marquez. Went life and death. Matter of fact, I think he died and got brought back to life against Providnikov. Casamayor, he was putting the bing bings on people. Lamont Peterson, yo, he was a real fighter. I don't know if y'all saw that, that, that Junior Winter fight. That was interesting, boy. Which one was it where he got knocked down? I think it was Holt. I can't remember which one it was, boy. He got his ass clipped. But the bottom line is, you just seen those names of the fighters as I scroll through. Tim Bradley. He was an amazing fighter. Now, when it comes to him as an analyst, some people think he's not so amazing. He's opinionated. And, you know, I, I don't really... I don't see why people hate him like that. I see all kind of racial epithets being said about the man. But to be honest with you, he's probably one of the more clean-cut um, boxing analysts out there. Uh, you can tell he's trying to watch what he says, but he's, a, he's more of an emotional analyst. You got other guys who are more intellectuals, um, guys who are more, I think, like, Analysts who like deal in real time what they're seeing in front of them, but 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 Tim to me seems to have a lot of emotion. Plus, he was a fighter. So if you weren't a fighter, especially on that championship level like Tim, you'd be probably not going to understand from where his opinions, especially when commentating, derive. Now, I do think there's sometimes where he's just being raw and uncut, and he goes off script. <laughs> And start saying things that maybe ESPN doesn't want him to say. Like when he started, he started talking about Javante Davis' situation. And he was just basically being Tim Bradley, not the analyst. I'm sure they had a talk with him about that. Uh, there was a time where they were talking about racial issues and the racial tension in America. And Tim Bradley gave a story about driving his car and through some neighborhood and got pulled over and his kids were in the car and he was telling this story, long drawn out story about if it wasn't for him, the champion he was, and he doesn't know what direction it would have gone. Anyway, man, some people felt like he was lying about that. But look, I don't know if he was telling the truth or lying. All I know is that's probably something ESPN didn't really want to hear because he always had Andre Ward. This is the problem. Andre Ward was there to kind of offset Tim, you know, Andre Ward wouldn't let Tim get get going into this like a uh, emotional whirlwind where he just starts, you know, rambling on and on. You know, Andre Ward used to kind of check and balance him. But since Andre Ward kind of left the platform, you know, Tim Bradley, I think, has been struggling because even he openly admitted that, you know, he he missed Andre Ward. And, you know, you could understand it. That was his boy. But this shit was Shakir Stevenson. Yo. Um, I, now, I listened to Tim. Well, I actually been muting the, last, the the fights when I go live. 
because sometimes I can't listen to it. Because even, look, let me tell y'all something. I listen to the, when, when I do play the boxing matches with the volume on, I listen to the commentators. And let me tell you, they, they can really have you thinking you're seeing some shit you're not seeing. Because when Tim Bradley said this past weekend about how Shakir was 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 controlling him and making making Haratuni and you know think think twice about what he's doing and this is where he's putting the mental pressure on him I'm like that to me it sounded like something Tim Bradley heard somebody else say and he's just over there kind of repeating the shit because what he was saying as far as what he was seeing in the ring that's not what I was seeing and that's not what I would have thought to tell anybody as a boxing analyst watching the fight live. But outside of just disagreeing with his commentary, what is it, right, that he's done that's so bad to make people converge on him and just shred him to pieces? I don't think I've ever heard him say anything derogatory about women. I don't think I heard him say anything derogatory about men. I don't think I've heard him say anything derogatory or unfavorable when it comes to race, um, religion. I don't think I've heard him say anything when it comes to politics. Uh, I don't. I don't think I've heard him say or act distasteful. Ever, he's just an emotional guy who gives his opinion, and you know, <laughs> eight times out of ten, people don't agree with him. But I don't think that's a reason to to come out here and just shred him and call him all kind of names and shit and racial epithets. How many times I hear people call this man a coon? A Uncle Tom? I'm like, from where did that derive? What did he do? Why? Because he's a boxing analyst for ESPN? I think that's outstanding that he got an award to be recognized for his efforts. I think it's outstanding that he has a career after boxing now. Uh, and I think it's outstanding that he's able to do something that he enjoys. Now, I'm going to tell you this, man. You know, I don't agree with everything he says at all. But sometimes, man, you know, it takes a a person with a lot of integrity um, and confidence and self-belief to go against a popular opinion. And that seems to be the kind of guy that Tim Bradley is. See, the problem is for a lot of people when they watch him, a lot of people really don't watch boxing like that. And what I mean is y'all don't remember seeing <clears throat> Tim Bradley's father on HBO 24-7 and, 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 and listening to his father talk and about how, what he, the values he instilled in Tim and how he raised Tim and Tim was a little small guy getting his shit and how he went in that boxing ring as a kid and got his ass kicked and was crying and shit, but he went back to the boxing gym. Y'all ain't heard that story with Tim Bradley was somebody when he was, I think, elementary or junior high school. He punched some kid who was handicapped and then how he apologized to him and shit, apologized, you know, in the during the 24-7, just saying, hey, look, basically, I'm paraphrasing, I'm like, hey, look, I had issues and how he felt bad for that. See, that's the problem. People don't really understand. That's why with me, I don't, I mean, I make jokes and shit because that's just my personality, but I kind of understand Tim Tim Bradley, uh, his approach to things. And I think that has a lot to do with how his pops raised him. Like, look, you know, if you, if you plant your two feet right here, that's where you belong. And you don't move. You know what I'm saying? Because my dad raised me the same way. My dad used to tell me, look, if you walk in a direction and somebody else is walking towards you, if it's a mutual respect and you both kind of go around each other, great. But if they, if not, and they think they're going to come through you, you raise your leg up high and step through their fucking chest. You know, so I, be, I believe in that. And I think Tim Bradley's dad kind of instilled some of that in him. So when it comes to his commentary, that's kind of how he is. He's like, look, you don't got to believe what I'm saying, but don't expect me to move off of my opinions. I'm going to raise my foot up and step through your chest, and I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I mean, I, I'm sitting back listening to him. 
And yeah, I sit here sometimes, I'm, and I be cussing and kind of like, what the hell is he talking about? But not not the way people are, are shred them like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I don't understand. But maybe I'm missing something. Tim Bradley was an amazing fighter. I think some people get it twisted because you see him out here on ESPN. He got the other guys around him who. You know, obviously, I'm thinking journalists, boxing historians, or whatever their roles are. They're, 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 they've been groomed and polished up to be in front of a microphone, a camera, been doing it for years. And, you know, you get these guys who are coming from <clears throat> the gentleman sport of boxing to now trying to get in front of these cameras and microphones and watching things live and, and deliver a boxing analysis round by round. And I think you almost expect them to be able to do it on the level of their, you know, they'll call them their colleagues, but their co-workers. And, 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 and maybe with me, I understand what I'm dealing with. He's not going to be as articulate and, uh, and I would say um, on point with his analysis and be able to draw from that data bank of knowledge what comes to boxing like Jim Lampley let me tell y'all something Jim Lampley is what I call the ultimate you talk about somebody being born to do something Jim Lampley was born to be a boxing analyst boxing commentator be a journalist like that man was just born to do the job he's doing Max Kellerman was pretty good um Al Bernstein, although he's a little, you know, kind of weird, he's pretty good. You know, they had those guys on. They had the, the champ, Sean O'Grady, and uh, the other guy, man. There's a bunch of guys, even Larry Merchant. Um, but but really, let's not get it twisted and hold Tim Bradley to that standard. Those guys, 99% of, 90% of those guys can't pull from hands-on, tactical level experience of actually being in the ring, championship level, like Tim Bradley. So there's something he's seeing because he's been there. So when he talks, I ain't saying we got to accept everything he says, but I think people should listen before they just shut him down. Now about Shakira Stevenson, he said something that I actually agree with. Because like I said, I don't agree with everything he says. But that shit about Shakir Stevenson and how he should have took that money. Three million a fight for five fights. I happen to agree with him. Now, we got to sit back and wait and see how things play out for Shakir Stevenson. Even though I think Shakir Stevenson uh, is a solid fighter, I just think he he ain't going to get... Is, he can't go much further in boxing because I think he's already tapped out as far as how how high he can go in weight. I don't think he goes above 135. Anything above 135, I think he gets hurt. But we, we're going to see if that move Shakir Stevenson made, if it's going to work out for him. But um, Tim Bradley thinks he should have stayed. I do too. Because it's a minimum. He could have made more every fight. But he did. What he, Shakir's betting on himself, and you got to respect that. But anyway, Tim Bradley, he's commented on Floyd, commented on Trafonte, commented on Terrence Crawford. You know he loved Terrence Crawford. He, that, I know for a fact Terrence Crawford must have beat the shit out of Tim Bradley. The way when Tim Tim Bradley, right? He could talk about any fighter. And it's like he don't really want to give him any credit, right? He may say some one thing nice about him, he'll say ten things to kind of take away from the compliment <laughs> that he just gave him. But when it comes to Terrence Crawford, Tim Bradley, like, yo, when I was sparring Crawford, I told him, hey, man, you ain't no sparring partner. You're, you're a champion. Right then I knew. I said, Crawford went there and almost turned Mr. Potato Head into a goddamn batch of French fries. You know what I'm saying? He must have cooked his ass. Because whenever he talks about Terrence Crawford, it's almost like back in the day when people in there talking shit about death row and somebody make a joke and say, well, Suge Knight in the building and everybody's looking over their shoulder and 
It's like saying Candyman three times. I dare Tim. I dare Tim Bradley say Bud, but say Bud three times. Say Terrence Crawford three times. Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford. Terrence. C -c 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 -c. He won't even get that shit out. I bet you he won't get it. Anyway, man, y'all leave Tim Bradley alone, man. Is he good for the company? I don't know. ESPN likes him. Some boxing fans like him. With me, man, I don't give a shit. I just think it's funny as hell that Tim Bradley speaks out of, uh, with so much emotion. And he'd be wrong like hell, in my opinion, on a lot of things. But that's who he is. And at least it's good to have a colorful personality out there talking boxing and keeping us entertained. But some people, I think, are taking it to the stupid with calling that man the, the type of shit they call him. I just, I, I don't agree with that. But anyway, y'all keep cool. Tim Bradley ain't going to change who he is. He's going to say what he want to say, call it like he sees it. And it is what it is. I'm in the breeze.